Okay, so this is our little uh, three horsepower Tecumseh engine with a 9.05 cubic inch displacement. This is a little interesting in that it has an ignition switch with a key. I'm not sure what this came off of. I believe it was a garden tiller. You can see there's nothing special about it at all. It does have a horizontal shaft with a pulley for a belt. However, no belt attached. Now, you'll be seeing this in different stages. Starts and stops will be inserted because I'm doing this by myself. So when it's time to start the motor up, I'll go ahead and throw this on a tripod and you'll get a glimpse. But for now, this is what we're working with. So this is the bottom side of the platform I'm going to bolt the engine to to try to reduce vibration. All it is is a piece of uh, particle board with two 2x4s two underneath and it's just screwed together with some 2 inch screws. Uh, hopefully this will keep that engine from rattling all over the floor. Okay YouTubers, let's have another look. This is the 3 horsepower Tecumseh engine we started with the other day. Today is now the uh, 13th of February 2008. And I mounted it to a piece of OSB with some uh, 2x4s underneath, hoping to arrest some of the vibration of the motor. And I'm going to start it now, just so you can see there's nothing tricky about it at all. Right now it's uh, configured to run on gasoline only. You can see there's a gas can on there. Underneath is my ignition switch. There's my pull start, my throttle. And over here the muffler and the horizontal shaft that comes up to obviously the side of the engine. So let's uh, go ahead and start it up. Okay, the ignition switch is set to run. Throttle is low. required to do a modification of this sort are uh, very simple and they're easily obtained. However, they are more expensive than, uh, uh, than it's let on in the videos you may have seen on YouTube or on the internet. Uh, we'll be following in the footsteps of Roy McAllister and Stephen Harris and attempting to make a uh, single piston engine run on hydrogen. So later today that will involve taking off the carburetor, um, running some line for the hydrogen, and hooking our hydrogen tank and regulator together. So you've seen the engine from all angles, you've seen it run on gasoline, and today you're going to see it torn apart and at least started to be converted to run on hydrogen gas. I should also mention that uh, playing with gasoline can be dangerous, playing with hydrogen can be very very dangerous. If you're not familiar with the properties of hydrogen, have somebody that's experienced help you. Make sure you know what you're doing, use the parts that are required, don't go cheap, and be very careful, and have a lot of fun. Here's our engine uh, getting ready to be stripped down for hydrogen operation. The first step was to remove the gas tank, which uh, was located right in here, obviously fed right down into the carburetor, which can be seen here. That'll be coming off next. Okay, so once again we're showing the fuel tank is off. The carburetor is next to come off, along with the throttle body. Over here the shaft has been polished a little bit, just in case we decide we want to use it for anything. And the muffler has been removed, right there. So those pieces that we've talked about so far are here. Here, this is the uh, kind of a shroud for the carburetor that also grounds out the ignition kill switch and I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that yet. It's a key operated kill switch. We'll work something out as well as the uh, muffler here. Okay, this is how our project looks at the end of the day today. Looks like we're into this three or four days only because I've had other commitments. If I had sat down and done this all at one sitting it probably would have taken Oh, maybe three or four hours just to do it the way I wanted it done. 
Uh, as you remember, there was an ignition switch which was uh, attached to a box surrounding the carburetor. We were able to find where that ignition switch attached to the uh, ignition system for the engine and went ahead and moved the switch from on that box to the fan shroud, which worked out quite nicely. We cleaned up the area where the gaskets go as far as the intake and uh, went ahead, I don't know if you can see this very well on the video, and ran some baling wire to attach to our uh, 16th inch inner diameter stainless steel tubing to kind of hold it in place. That stainless steel tubing comes around the side of the engine, attaches with the baling wire again to a screw, again just to try to arrest vibration. This is a, a beta version. It sticks up into the air. I haven't decided where to cut it yet. We'll uh, get back with this again tomorrow, which should be the day we fire it up. I also went ahead and changed the regulator, the low pressure regulator, to one that starts at uh, 1 psi and works its way up to 5 rather slowly so I can better control the flow of the gas. I have a hose coming out of the gas coming over to here, about 6 feet away is where the uh, mower engine is and I wanted to keep it a little bit of a distance away. This is what I finally came up with. I trimmed that 16th inch stainless steel tubing and attach my uh, swage lock valve to that. That's what controls the final amount of gas that goes into the motor. And follow that around over to here where it goes in. So let's fire it up and see if we can get it to work. Now the first thing we'll do is go over here and make sure that this valve is off. We don't want any gas leaking before we're ready for it to come out. Next thing we'll do is come over here and adjust the regulator. Of course that means opening the bottle. And with our low pressure stage regulator we're going to turn it up to about 10 psi. And now, we'll come right back over here and try to fire it up. I'm going to crack this valve just a bit, just until I can hear the hydrogen coming out. fire that you just witnessed is probably a result of me mixing the hydrogen gas incorrectly. I need to work on that. It's a learning curve. Also, the engine doesn't throttle really well and I think that's a, a timing issue. And of course, according to uh, Roy McAllister and Stephen Harris, the timing does need to be adjusted to get the engine to run properly. So uh, there you have it, an engine that runs on hydrogen gas. Don't let anyone tell you it can't be done.